Hi, I'm Luke Dicker. I compose for, for films, and I do that most of the time for the symphony orchestra. The first thing you need desperately is, is, is your brain activity. You have to, to make sure that you do develop a point of view for the music. How do we look at the movie? You, you can say, this is the image and this is happening, so I'm only looking at what is happening. But you can also analyze what the movie is about, even what is not seen by the directors or, or the producer. Or you, most of the time, the cutters see more than the directors and the producers. We had a long, long uh, talk with uh, Job de Burg, who did the, the, the Paul Verhoeven movies. He got interested of what, what, I, what I said about this, because the cutter is in the same position. So, What can we do with the material we have that includes possibilities that are not foreseen by anybody else in the, in the production? With music, you have even the advantage that you have another medium to, to add to the, to, the, to the movie that was not uh, expected to be in there. But you bring it in because there, there is a possibility to bring this in. And of course, you have to discuss this with the cutter and the director and everybody else. That is what interests me in writing for the movies. Writing a music that does fit the scene is different from taking a point of view in the overall dramatic possibilities that a story or the movie has. Yeah. Because the conclusion could be totally different. So usually in, in, in practice it co goes like, like this. You have the commission and you're working on the, on the movie. They call you after one week. Do you have already something? And most of the time I say, no, but I'm working on it. And, and then the next week they call, uh, and then when you say, no, but I'm getting there slowly. Uh, and in the third week, then you can say, okay, I have my ideas now, and I can start composing. And you talk with them what you want, and then you adapt what has to be adapted. The main thing is actually of talking to the people as much as you can in the dramatic things because then you use language and you understand each other then much more easy than talking about music because your, your knowledge of music is not, not, not likely to be shared by other people so much. So uh, it, the misunderstandings talking about music could be galore. So I try to keep on talking about the drama. I can describe it by painting, a painting of everything that's in the movie and I I put it from the point from the colors that I want to use and from the forms I want to use on, on a spot somewhere. So suddenly uh, I was able to make a decision like I, uh, like I just mentioned from the, uh, the forest man to, to start the, the whole thing with, with a very low sounds that are continuously there and, and develop from there the whole themes. Uh, the elements that I used in uh, for the force men were very clear. Uh, there were three dramatic elements. The, the first thing that were, that we needed for the movie was the suspense. There was something coming up and it would show itself at some point, but you didn't know what it was. And I called it fate. And there was something else, which was a, a sort of religious feeling that that had to be rep represented in the movie by, by music. The third thing that had to be uh, represented by the music was the, the love theme. And they are all in the main title music. The suspense was musically represented by, by lines of strings that are woven into each other. The, the religious thing was represented by a sort of, of quote from 
a Greek Catholic church music, the oldest music that is rec recognizable for all for us. It, it's like 1200 years old sometimes. But you, you can say, oh, this is Western music. It's from our Christian culture, you can recognize it. And the love theme was just a love theme melody. And they were all in the title music. And that was the only change that Paul made in the music. He did not want the, the love theme in the beginning of the movie. What you would hear in the music was simply a low bass, and then started the, the, the knitting and the, wa the, the waves of, uh, of the, in, within the strings, of bringing suspense, and then the, the, the brass, the horns, would bring the singing of some Greek Catholic hymn, it was all imitations in the orchestra, like in Plato's cave, mirrors and the mist and everything. So uh, not exactly recognizable for an audience, maybe for musicians it would, would be. After I came into the conclusion that these were the three dramatic elements I would use, I knew what I had to do. Find music that fits these elements in this special movie. And that brought me to, the, to my choice. I knew what I had to do. I could just use the little time that I had left for the composing. I could go very extreme and still be without the concept of the movie. I stay away from what you actually see in a movie. Sometimes you have to get close, you know, like in the forest man with the accident, you have to prepare really for the accident. And you have to get as close, closer, 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 closer to the accident till the accident happens. Uh, it's like going in, into a tunnel and that is inevitable. You have to go to this point of the accident. The music, Building the audience there. Yes, yeah. you, you have to take the to push, the, the audience has to feel that they are pushed as well in the tunnel of uh, leading to the accident, so it has its ma maximum effect. With the storytelling, that's different. Uh, it's a little bit here and a little bit talking there. What I would like is uh, to, for a movie to sort of retell the, 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 the thing and at the same time, of course, not being in the way of, the, of, of what you see, but sometimes re um, bring up music that fits to a scene that you have seen before, using it again in the scene that doesn't seem to have to do something with it, but it recalls uh, what, you, what you've seen before. So that, that's the game, you know, and what it takes is your brain, good thinking, and making your decisions and knowing what sort of musical material you, you want to use, and then work day and night. I mean, going to bed with the movies, waking up with the movie. Then you have the maximum relation you can get with the movie. It's a sort of love relation, you know? You have a very peculiar method of uh, composing because everything happens in your head and then you write all the music without playing it, right? I'm a traditional uh, composer in, in the way that I also use traditional techniques of, uh, of, of, of writing the, the, the music. I, I write the music. I write the music with, with my hand. I use electronics quite a bit till the year 86. And in 86, uh, you, you could electronically sample strings or whatever instruments. They could last for more than eight seconds, uh, which means that the computer suddenly could be a big help in also composing the music. Before that time, you would have electronic instruments like a synthesizer, but you would play them with a keyboard, and that was still was an instrument, you know, it was electronic, but it was an instrument. But after that, you could just fake a, a lot. I had a lot of fun working with all kinds of synthesizers, but I know how to write for the symphony orchestra. And there's not many people who, who can do that. Why would I be in that, in that game? So I decided, okay, from now on, I'm a composer who writes for natural instruments and uh, basically for the symphony orchestra, so for larger orchestras.
if I do that, uh, I have not so much competition. I saw in the meanwhile the music budgets getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so because a lot of people who were not composers before suddenly were composers because they were used to the computer. The whole thing, technical, would be easier because they could hear immediately what they were doing. They could control it better <laughs> mm -hmm. because they could hear it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget, there is more to watch.